So to understand Green's identities, let's just back up a little bit and, and kind of review some stuff we know from single variable calculus. So for functions of a single variable, the product rule looks like this. If we take the product of uh, u and v and then take the derivative, we get u prime v plus u v prime. And then hopefully when you did integration, you saw integration by parts. And in particular, well, I know you saw integration by parts, um, but you saw how it's just the integral version of um, the product rule. So in other words, if we slam an integral on both sides of this equation, then on the left, we get uv, and on the right, we get the integral of u prime v plus the integral of uv prime. And then the common mnemonic is that they usually subtract this guy over to the other side, so it looks like integral of u prime um, uh, v, wait, did I subtract the wrong one? Uh, oh, I did, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, we subtract this one to the other side. So it looks like um, uv prime is equal to uv minus uh, integral v u prime. Or, as it's more commonly denoted, integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral v du. But it's handy to, to think about it in in this form right here, because what it tells you is it says that if you have a, a derivative in part of the integrand, you can move it onto the other part, right? That's how we end up with the prime over on the u. And all you have to pay is uh, a minus sign and a boundary term, right? Remember, this is, in, this is evaluated over the boundary. Okay, so, Green's theorem is an analog of this idea, but sorry, Green's identity is an analog of this, but it's the case when we already have differentiated v once. So this would look like u v prime is equal to uh, u prime v prime plus integral u v double prime. And so this is what we want to do though. We want to take one of these derivatives from uh, the V and move it onto the U so that we get this form here. Okay, let's see what it looks like. So Green's identity, so this is, this is uh, Green's first identity. He was a clever guy, he came up with a few of them. Um, and it uses Green's theorem to prove. So we need to say that we assume the hypotheses of Green's theorem. So blah, 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 things are continuous and differentiable where they need to be and stuff. Um, uh, so when all that is, is satisfied, then the identity looks like as follows. The double integral over some region, what's called D of F Laplacian G with respect to area is, and then you want to think of this Laplacian as being uh, two, two gradients, right? So we want to put one of those gradients on the G, and, uh, or sorry, on the F. So we have the integral around the boundary now. So C is the boundary of D um, of F gradient g dot n ds minus the integral, uh, the double integral that is, of gradient f dotted gradient g da. So we've succeeded in taking one of these gradients and putting it in front of the other one in this term right here. Okay, so um, some things to observe this this one right here what happens here we've got this flux integral and we're actually doing the gradient of G dotted with the unit normal vector that is the directional derivative of G in the outward normal direction so we're actually integrating 
the um, uh, the normal derivative of g over the boundary of the region that we're interested in. Okay, the way that we see this to be true is by starting with the path integral and applying Green's theorem. So if we have this one, then let's see. So applying Green's theorem uh, directly, we have that it's going to be the double integral over the interior region of the divergence of f times g. Uh, oh, sorry, of uh, f times gradient g. Um, <clears throat> And then from our earlier identity, the divergence of f times gradient g is going to be the double integral over d of, um, and then we apply the gradient to f, and then we apply the gradient to g. And then that just becomes the bits and pieces that, that we're interested in. So the first one is the gradient of f dotted gradient of g dA. And then the second one is the double integral of f times the Laplacian of g dA. And then you can just uh, subtract to get this one on the other side and you have the identity. Okay, so that's a box for the end of proof. I guess, yeah, here, proof. We don't often prove theorems. Might as well do it when we want to. Um, okay, so that's Green's first identity, which, as I said, is a form of integration by parts in, in higher dimensions. Um, we also have Green's second identity. And so also under the hypothesis of Green's theorem, um, and this one states that the double integral over a region of uh, F Laplacian G minus G Laplacian F is equal to the integral around the boundary of f gradient g minus g gradient f. Uh, whoops, and that's the uh, where we integrate the normal component, the normal derivative. Okay, and the proof of this one is actually dead simple. Uh, we just take the identity that we proved in the uh, previous part. So it's this guy. So there it is for uh, f of g. And then here it is for g and f. Um, and then you just subtract them, and there's your proof. It falls out, it gives you exactly the identity that we have in the uh, line above.